Today's story is about one of the most terrifying and wicked women that ever lived in Ireland. She was the infamous Moira Rua, which means Red Mary. She was so named on account of her flaming red hair and her legendary and often violent fiery temper. Moira Rua was so cruel that any servants that displeased or angered her were hanged from the battlements of her castle. Male servants were hung by the neck until dead, while female servants were hung by their hair and mutilated by cutting off their breasts. And now it's time to go deep in the crypt, a channel dedicated to exploring the paranormal, the strange, and the supernatural. If you like the video, please violently batter the like button and subscribe to the channel. And now let's go deep in the crypt. Limana Castle. Red Mary lived at Limana Castle in County Clare in the rugged Burren region. The Burren is an eerie and barren limestone rock section of land near the west coast of Ireland. The Burren was so hostile that invaders said there was not enough water to drown a man, not enough trees to hang a man, and not enough earth to bury him. Limana Castle is said to be one of the most haunted places in Ireland, occupied by the ghost of the terrifying red-haired Mora Rua and the tortured spirits of her many victims. Before we get into the story of Mora Rua, I'm going to talk about the origins and background of Limana Castle. There were many interesting and important events happening when this once proud and illustrious castle was in her full glory. Kings of Thomond. In the 1480s, the O'Brien clan built a five-story tower at a place that would be later called Limana. You may remember the O'Brien clan from another video on this channel. A powerful warrior clan, the O'Briens were the Kings of Thomond. Now, in the 1500s, the infamous King Henry VIII came to the throne in England. Henry is known around the world for many reasons, mostly for chopping off the heads of his many wives. But something that Henry is not well known for is his policy and actions against Ireland. Bringing Ireland to heel. Henry was a rich and fairly powerful king, but England at the time was nowhere near as powerful as it would become under his daughter, Queen Elizabeth I. Under King Henry, the British Empire didn't even exist. Henry was always ambitious and he wanted more power. And so, as well as fighting against France, he went to war with Ireland. But he didn't wage a direct military campaign against Ireland. Instead, he set about bringing Ireland under his control by cunning and intrigue and deception. Surrender and regrant. Henry knew that if he tried to invade and conquer Ireland, the powerful Irish clans would unite and offer fierce resistance. Henry didn't have the funds, the army, or the military prowess to guarantee victory in this way, especially since he was also fighting against France. So he attempted a more deceptive strategy. One of the ways in which Henry broke Irish resistance was through a ploy called surrender and regrant. This meant that Henry made the Irish clan leaders an offer. Instead of being attacked by England and having their lands and property confiscated by force, they could keep their property. All they had to do was submit their property to Henry, surrender, and they would then be granted the continued use of their property, what was called regrant. There was some paperwork involving title deeds and so on, but to the Irish clans, it meant they could keep their land and property which was their wealth and source of power. However, what they didn't fully understand was that the king could cancel the agreement at any time and for any reason. Meaning that if the Irish clans behaved in a way that Henry didn't like, they would lose everything they had. If that happened to any Irish clan, they would have no allies against Henry. They were on their own. Since their counterparts in the other clans were not for now at risk of losing their lands, if they continue to obey the king. It was a brilliant strategy to divide and conquer the Irish clans. This was also a way of bringing the feudal system of control to Ireland, which was very alien to Irish and Gaelic law. Thou shalt obey. One family that surrendered to King Henry in this way were the O'Briens. After receiving their lands back from Henry, they became the Lords of Thomond. 
which was a downgrade because they used to be kings. And now they had to obey King Henry. Moira Rua, Red Mary. Now we fast forward to the 1600s. Henry VIII was long dead and Moira Rua was born in 1615. She married young, a man called Daniel Nalen, and they had three children. When Daniel died in 1639, she was quickly remarried to Conor O'Brien, the head of the O'Brien clan. This is somewhat troublesome because Moira Rua's father was also an O'Brien, meaning that she married her cousin. But this was not uncommon in Ireland or in much of the world back then. Now Moira, was a wealthy woman by that time as she had inherited her first husband's wealth and she used her money to build a fabulous four-story castle at Lee Manor where she and her husband Connor lived in total luxury at least for the 1600s. War. Now over in England a civil war broke out in 1642. This was a war to decide how England would be governed either by a king who was Charles I or by a parliament and this was when Oliver Cromwell came to prominence. After Cromwell won the Civil War, he turned his attention to Ireland. He invaded Ireland in 1649 with his battle-hardened soldiers, and he quickly captured most of the island after carrying out two well-known bloody massacres at Drogheda and at Wexford. These brutal slayings were delivered as payback for terrible atrocities committed by Gaelic landowners against English settlers in 1641 loyalty. Now the O'Brien clan didn't take kindly to Cromwell's arrival and they took up arms against his soldiers in County Clare. Conor O'Brien, their leader, organized attacks and skirmishes against Henry Ireton, Cromwell's top general. And Moira Rua participated in these raids herself. She was a bit of a badass in fairness. Conor O'Brien was so troublesome to Henry Ireton's forces that he sent five men to find and shoot him. Connor was shot, but survived. Afterwards, Red Mary sent out a party to capture the man who had shot her husband. He was captured and brought back to Limana Castle, where he was executed by hanging from the walls of the castle. Betrayal. In 1651, Connor was ambushed and mortally wounded by soldiers under Edmund Ludlow at the Battle of Inchicronan. He was shot from his horse. He was brought back to Limana Castle by his comrades to recover, but Red Mary refused him entry. She shouted from the top of the battlements that she had no use for a dead man, and Connor soon died outside the castle. Even for Red Mary, this was a pretty brutal betrayal of her husband. Risk. Now, after her husband's death, Moira had a problem. She knew that the country was alive with Cromwellian forces. And without Connor, who had been granted the title of Lord, Moira had no right to hold her castle under English law. Remember, surrender and regret. She risked losing Limana Castle forever if Cromwell's forces decided to confiscate it. Without Connor's protection, this was looking extremely likely. So Moira devised a clever plan and executed it flawlessly. Marriage. Red Mary took a trip to the nearest English army garrison. This was a very brazen move, since the English were Mary's mortal enemies. She and her clan were literally at war with them. She demanded to meet the commanding officer, and when he presented himself, she informed him that she would marry any man in the garrison who would be willing to be her husband. The commander was astonished, but agreed to take the message to his men. And as it happened, a Captain John Cooper stepped forward and agreed to marry Mary. She was, after all, a very wealthy woman with a splendid castle and a lot of land. In this way, Red Mary secured for herself Limana Castle, as the English would no longer confiscate it if she had a loyal English husband. Horses Leap. Red Mary and John Cooper were married, and a few days later, Mary put her plan into full effect. After getting John very drunk, she challenged him to ride her black stallion, a fine horse called Seamus. However, to make things interesting, John would have to ride the horse with no bridle. John, feeling brave, hopped up on the horse confidently, at which the black stallion took off at a full gallop. Now, since there was no bridle, John couldn't stop or control the horse in any way. All he could do was hold on for his life. The horse ran at top speed all the way to the cliffs of Moher, 
about 15 miles away. After reaching the cliffs, the horse stopped abruptly and kicked, throwing the rider off its back. John Cooper was thrown from the horse over the cliffs and he fell 400 feet to the bottom where he was smashed to pieces on the rocks. This is where Limana Castle gets its name. Limana, in Old Irish, means horse's leap. 25. After the deed was done, the horse returned to Limana, where Red Mary greeted him affectionately. And after doing away with John Cooper, Mary married again, and again, and again. It is said that Mary had a total of 25 husbands. Each husband that she married would also meet their death under suspicious and cruel circumstances. One of her husbands died after Mary kicked him in the stomach during a heated argument. Another was thrown off the battlements of the castle. Each husband lasted for exactly a year and a day before being disposed of by Red Mary. The Hollow Tree by this time, Mary had made a lot of enemies, and this was to eventually catch up with her. One day she was out riding on her land when she was captured by a group of men, and they decided to deal a form of extreme justice to Red Mary. Mary was taken to a hollow tree deep in the nearby forest. She was tied and placed in the tree and sealed up inside it, and there she was left to die slowly of starvation and asphyxiation. With no one to hear her cries, Mary must have died a horrible death. Hauntings. As I said at the start, Limana has the reputation of being one of the most haunted castles in Ireland. The ghost of Mary with her flaming red hair and fiery temper has often appeared there. And it is reported that sometimes the cries of her victims can be heard resonating within the ghostly shell of the castle. This is one of those places that many fear at night. And if you can find the hollow tree in that deep forest, it is said you can hear Mary wailing and raging on the darkest of nights. So folks, that's what I got for you today. What did you think of the story of Red Mary and Lee Manor Castle? Would you visit Lee Manor Castle? And do you believe the ghost of Red Mary still walks within its walls? Do you think Mary was the product of a cruel world and a violent time? Or was she just plain crazy? Was she right to get rid of her husband, John Cooper, in such a horrible way? After all, they had been enemies. And did she give her a horse, a sugar cube, or a carrot when he returned? <laughs> do you believe she was married? 25 times. To me, this is where the stories of Red Mary become a little too far-fetched. I mean, if she really did kill a man with a kick to the stomach, she either had some incredible legs or some very sharp shoes. And as for throwing or pushing one husband off the top of the castle, well, that does sound very similar to another story covered on this channel. So really, do you think that happened twice? Furthermore, if her husbands kept dying after one year, who would be brave or stupid enough to marry the woman? And what did she even want with 25 husbands? In another version of the story, her husbands weren't killed but were kicked out of Limana Castle and allowed to live somewhere else on the property. But in the end, who knows what Mary was capable of and what her motivations were. Please remember to batter the like button on the way out and subscribe to the channel. And remember, stay scary. on account of her flaming red hair and uh, and her Henry <clears throat> Henry Morarua married her first he invaded <clears throat> Henry <clears throat>